How are we doing? Good. I'm, I'm great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Man, that's amazing. Wow. So um, this is our last worship service of the school year. Boo. Oh, my gosh. Which means, which means this is, this is the time. If you were ever going to go crazy singing and dancing during worship, this is your opportunity. Right now. Exactly, Trey. Thank you. This is when it can happen. So we want to get it all out before the Lord. We don't want to hold anything back. Okay? So we're going to do this, and it's going to be amazing. Um, because God deserves our best, right? One person sort of agrees. God yeah. deserves our best, right? Yeah. Yes! Amazing. Okay. All right. Here we go. When it says we're going to dance in the river, what are you going to do? You're going to boogie down with the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Okay, when it says you're going to jump in the river, what are you going to do? Jump in the river. That's right. Let's practice our jumping. Yes. Good. Great. Amazing. Okay. So we're going to sing that whole thing one more time. And you're going to give it everything that you have. Plus a little bit more, okay? Here we go. One, two, three. I've got a river living water mountain never will run dry. I don't know. It's an open heaven. You're releasing. We will never be denied. Everybody, stir it up. Here we go. Because we're stirring up deep, deep wells. Goes to the left and goes to the left and if he goes to the right and we'll 
go to the right, we're gonna take jump, jump, jump in the rain. Jump, 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 everybody. If we go to the left, and we go to the left, and if we go to the right, and we go to the right, we're gonna dance, 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 dance in the rain. Dance, 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 everybody. Go to the left, and we go to the left. Go to the right, and we go to the right. We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 everybody. Go to the left, and we go to the left. And if we go to the right, then we go to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout. Cries out to you, deep cries out to you, deep cries out, deep cries out to you. We cry out, we cry out to you. your praise hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing it's your breath in our lungs 
So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out You guys are avoiding them. How about you scoop forward? Scoop forward. There you go. Hey guys, uh, that was a little loud, but uh, you know this is the last time of the year for uh, not only us seniors but us as a youth group. And after this, we're gonna kind of go through a lot of change again, and there's gonna be new leaders stepping up and new people coming in and um, you know it though it may be different it's still the same God that we're serving and no matter what happens guys God's going to be over this youth group God's still going to love us and as long as we have God in front of us in the youth group as long as we make him our priority this youth group will continue to be amazing as, as it always has been so um, you know as we sing this song just kind of reminisce over good times this year, but also to celebrate the new times that God has given us and the new connections that we'll be able to make and just all the wonderful things that we'll be able to do through God. So just kind of sing it out in this last song. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me.
this truth together. No shadow you won't lie a mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No one you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No one you won't. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here tonight so we can worship you one last time for this school year. I pray for all the blessings you have provided us with over this past year, and I pray for the many more blessings to come because I know that you will not fail, and this ministry will continue to grow. Even though people are leaving, more people are coming, and we know that you provide blessings to others. So help us to focus our attention on you tonight to make this the best last youth group ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, hold on for one second. Morgan, get up there off stage for me. Guys, reach your hands out to the band. I want to pray a special blessing over them. God, I ask that you be with this band. The old and the new. Lord, I ask that for the seniors who are graduating, that you continue to use their passion for music and worship in college to help change lives to draw their classmates closer to you. God, I ask that you help them to leave a mark on this band, a model for the incoming members to see how it is to be a Christ follower, to lead worship. God, I am so thankful for what you have provided me in this ministry and these students. Watch over them and protect them. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys can have a seat for me. Pass this around and put your name on it. There's some blank spaces on the back side. All righty. So we're going to finish out our reading of the book of Acts. If you remember, 
back in August, we started a brand new teaching style, an exegetical teaching style. Where we read through the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, and the book of Acts. And what I want to share with you guys is that I am so incredibly impressed and proud of all of you. This style of teaching is not easy to do and it's not easy to receive. There's a lot of hard truth that we have to confront and that we have to look in the mirror and and deal with a lot of our own weakness and that's not fun. But you guys have grown immeasurably because of this year. I genuinely believe in my heart that you went from being a student to a disciple and now you're apostles. I truly believe that. I believe that each of you now have the skill and the ability to go into the world and to share God's love and story with everyone that you meet. Because God has changed your life and has worked in your life to grow you, to be who you are. I want to say thank you for having the patience to go through this. This was not my idea. This was all God. He had told this to me a long time ago, and he was like, it's time to do it. The students are ready, you're ready, the ministry is ready. So I want to thank you for persevering through this difficult season. So we're going to finish out. I'm going to be reading to you from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51, through chapter 8, verse 1a. So the first half of verse 1 in chapter 8. Listen to God's word. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and son of man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I ask that you come and be with us tonight. Fill this sanctuary with your Holy Spirit. Reveal to us your truth. Open up our hearts so we can hear your voice. Open up our eyes so we can see your face. Give us the courage and the strength to be your apostles, to go into the world just as Stephen did, to preach the good news of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, take me away so it not be my message, but let it be your message. In your name I pray. Amen. So a little little, uh, context. Last week, um, we had read where the church was growing incredibly fast. And because of that speed, uh, they started to notice a lot of uh, need in the community that the church was not serving. And so they went to the apostles and was like, hey, go take care of it. And the apostles were like, guys, we're 12 men. We can't do that. We have another mission we need to take care of. So we need you to go select seven people to cover these these different ministries. Stephen happens to be one of those seven people. And what we see at the beginning of this chapter, in in chapter 7, at the very, very beginning, is Stephen preaching to Israel. He basically condenses the entire Old Testament into about a 20-minute sermon. And Stephen, the, the apostle Stephen, one of the, ones who was ch- the, one of the sevens who was chosen by the church, as he's preaching God's truth to God's people, Israel, he throws out a very serious indictment against Israel, and it was their disobedience to God. All these years that they ignored God and did the opposite of what he told them to do through his prophets. Now you see, by doing this, It puts Stephen in direct conflict with the people. And the result of that conflict was execution by stoning. Now, this is not an easy death, all right? It's not quick, it's not painless. It is a long and very painful way to go. 
But what we see with Stephen and the mob is that they, are, they stand in stark contrast to one another. They both believe that they're following God's commandments, but they're on opposite ends. Here's your first fill in the blank. You see, Stephen is awarded with everlasting life in paradise, and Israel is punished with isolation and separation from God. It may be strange that I say that Stephen is awarded with everlasting life when he was obviously murdered for his faith. Seems kind of counterintuitive. But what we see with Israel is that they are owned, quite literally owned by Rome. They're persecuted, they're beaten, they're murdered, they're taxed. Because of their disobedience, God is punishing them by keeping Rome in charge of them. Because their, their understanding of paradise is that when they came to Israel, when they came to Jerusalem, that was the promised land. They were supposed to be free. They were supposed to live in eternity with God in Israel. But that's not what's happening. Now, as we look at this, you may be thinking, how does this story relate to our lives? Well, this is, this is how it relates to us. And this is your second fill in the blank. You see, life can be difficult. It can be painful and lonely at times. No different than what they were experiencing. It was difficult for Israel to be under the rule of Rome. It was painful because Rome taxed them. Rome would bring in their soldiers to beat up their people, to murder people who were trying to revolt. And it was lonely because they felt separated from God. We're the same way. Our lives are difficult. They're painful. And at times, even lonely. I mean, even sitting in this group right now, you may feel isolated. You may feel alone. You may feel disconnected. But what you need to understand is that this isolation, this pain, is a direct result of the original sin of disobedience that Adam and Eve did back in the Garden of Eden. And let's look at that for a second. Let's, let's turn to the book of Genesis. We're going to read Genesis chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. Listen to God's word. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Did any of you guys pick up on something that that happened as a direct result of our fall? Pain. Adam and Eve's disobedience to God resulted in pain. We experience pain because of that. Here's your next fill in the blank. Disobedience to God leads us to destruction. When we ignore what God tells us to to do, we end up suffering because of it. When we try to live our lives on our own, we experience pain. No matter how great our plan may seem in our head, it will always fall apart. You see, we can't see the future. We can't control someone else's behavior. We can't control the outcome of an, of an action. And the pain that we suffer as a result of the act of disobedience can either be a direct result of our actions or indirect because of someone else. Here's an example of direct pain. You, we're at the end of the semester. All of your grades are due, homework's due, projects due, tests are coming up. If you choose not to study, if you choose not to do your homework, you receive bad grades. If you're playing too much Fortnite or watching too much Netflix or texting too much or going out with your friends too much and your grades suffer because of it, you suffer. Mom and dad take that cell phone away. Mom and dad take that Xbox or PlayStation or computer away from you. 
They take your cell phone away. You suffer because of your direct disobedience towards your parents. Because you see, Scripture teaches us, the Ten Commandments teaches us, we must honor our mother and our father. When we don't do that, we're disrespecting them and we're being disobedient to God because God is working through our parents. Our teachers, albeit sinful and broken and fail us on multiple occasions, I get that, okay? But when they tell you to do your homework and you don't do it, that's disobedience to God because God is using that teacher to reach you. Your coach, your band, your band director, me, Pastor Steve, whoever it may be, when you do what we don't tell you to do, or when you don't do what we tell you to do, you suffer because of it. Now, indirectly, when we suffer pain, think of it this way. Maybe you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and you catch them cheating on you. Right? You didn't do anything wrong. They were disobedient to God. And they hurt you because of it. You see, God created marriage in order to develop a covenant bond between two people. Dating is basically practice for marriage. So when you enter into a relationship with someone, you're entering into a covenant relationship with that person. You are making a promise that you're going to be single and, mon and be in a monogamous relationship with them. And when that happens, when they cheat on you, they break that promise, and you get hurt because of it. Now, Israel, as I said, they, sh they are suffering pain. About 30 years after this story, in circa 70 AD, approximately 70 AD, Rome comes in because they get tired of Israel. They get tired of their revolts. They get tired of their rebellions. So they say, fine, you want to keep coming against us? We're going to teach you a lesson once and for all. They come in, and they sack Israel. They destroy the temple, burn it to the ground. To make it even worse, Islam then comes in a couple hundred years later and builds their own temple right on that foundation. Talk about pain. Think of, of First Baptist coming over here and burning down our church and then building their church on top of it. It's the same thing. It will be painful for us. We will feel separated from God. That's how Israel feels. They feel isolated from God. But it's because they're disobedient to God. They don't listen to God. They don't do what he tells them to do. And he has a bunch of prophets telling them. Stephen, Jesus, Moses, Noah, Ezekiel, Elijah. All of these people are warning Israel. Stop. God is trying to save you. Just listen. Now, when we examine Stephen's death more closely, we realize the type of death that he experiences is actually a reward for his obedience, which, again, I said this earlier, it seems kind of counterintuitive. How is that someone who's faithful, his...